Hello, friends. Welcome to Trivia Over Tea, the quiz show podcast where we drink tea and play trivia. I'm your host, Matthew Cook, and I'm here virtually with our guest scorekeeper, Mason Cook. Mason, how are you today? I'm doing very well. Uh, you know, it's it's always nice to have a day where you wake up and you just do some trivia. Yes, and today is that day. So let's meet this week's contestants. First, we have Lydia. Hi, I'm Lydia. I'm a singer and I am nervous but excited to be here. Very yes. good. What, what tea are you drinking? I'm drinking ginger peach black tea because I love peach. Very good. Well, thank you for being here today, Lydia. And we also have Chris. Hi, I'm Chris. Uh, I try to sing. And today I am drinking, I'll be a bit basic, a honey citron tea. Very good. Well, thank you both for being here today. As with all of our regular episodes, we'll have four rounds of questions, each with a slightly different format. And so without further ado, Mason will explain the rules for round one. All right, round one, it's our first general knowledge round. Correct answers are worth 10 points apiece. Uh, questions will be on a wide variety of subjects. All righty, Lydia, you are up first. Are you ready? Sure. All yeah. right. Question one. The Union Pacific Railroad Network, which was historically part of the first transcontinental railroad, contains a fleet of roughly 8,200 locomotives consisting of 43 different models. What is the average age of a Union Pacific locomotive? A, 17.8 years. B, 26.5 years, or C, 6.3 years. All right. Well, based on the fact that my locomotive knowledge is very limited, uh, surprising, which because I take the train every day. Um, let's see. I, huh. I think I'm going to split the difference, go down the middle. I'm going to go with A. That's correct. The rail line is phasing out older, older locomotives rapidly to replace them with lower emissions models of their trains. Question two, what are electrically charged atoms called? A, electrons, B, ions, or C, protons? This is either gonna be real embarrassing or really funny or a mix of everything considering my science knowledge is awful. Um, okay. It's gonna be embarrassing. Let's let's go with A again. Let's go electrons. Uh, no, it's actually B ions. Hell yeah! Um, I knew it. <laughs> ions are important for a variety of actions and can exist in many forms. Question three: The name of what capital and sorry, the name of what capital and largest city in Tibet roughly means place of gods? A. Chengguan, B. Lhasa, or C. Shigatse. Hmm. Hmm. I think just because I like the way it sounds, I'm going to go with C. Uh, it was actually B, uh, Lhasa. Ah. Yeah. Question four. Roro, Roro Mara, oh, shoot. I did try to pronounce this earlier. Question four. <laughs> Roro Mara, Maraugi. Mason, I really hate it when you write these questions that make me pronounce really, really long words. Oh, no. That's why I write them. I know. It, it's very entertaining for us. Okay. Exactly. I, I, I am very entertained by this. Take some anxiety off of us. You know, you can exactly. share it all around. <laughs> okay, I think I got it. Question four. Roro Maragi, Kauata, and Bucket are types of what equipment? A, shields, B, swords, or C, helmets? C? Um, actually, it was A, shields. Um, there, they were apparently parrying clubs uh, used somewhere. I, I looked it up earlier. Mason, you didn't write me an explanation for this one. Oh, right. Um, those are parrying clubs usually used, I believe, in uh, Melanesia. Oh, there you go. Interesting. And finally, question five. On April 6th, 2019, scientists observed the first recorded case of a what on Mars? A, a hurricane, B, a tornado, or C, a Mars quake. Oh, that's interesting. Let's see. Hmm. 
wouldn't be B. Water. Um, I think just based on the topography, I'm going to go with C and a Mars quake. Correct. Moon quakes are well documented, and there has been evidence of quakes on Venus, but this was the first observed occurrence of a Mars quake. But apparently, they are fairly common. Ah. All righty. Chris, are you ready for your five questions? As ready as I'll ever be. All righty. Question one. Deuterium is an isotope of what common element? A, hydrogen, B, oxygen, or C, helium? Deuterium. Uh, I'm going to go with the one that sounds the most similar. So we'll go with C, helium. Um, actually, it was hydrogen. Well, uh, deuterium <laughs> is commonly used in M NMR experiments. Question two. Many dystopias have been inspired by the walled city of what area of Hong Kong? A, Yuen Long, B, Sha Tin, or C, Kowloon? Oh, is this a, the apartments? The, like the super compact apartment complexes? Mason, you wrote this question. Um, no, the, no? well, I mean, okay. yes, but no, not exactly. Like the, the slum apartments, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what they're called, but I do know about them. Can I get the uh, choices again? Yeah. A, Yuen Long, B, Sha Tin, or C, Kowloon? I'm going to go with C. I'm not that's even going to try to pronounce it. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, the walled city was a Chinese exclave created for the new territories. When sorry, when the new territories were released to Britain in 1898. Yes. The area was famous for being a crime haven controlled by local triads, most famously mm -hmm. 14K and Sun Yi On. Yep. Thanks, Britain. Yep. Question three: The popular Blue Yeti microphone has recently become one of the biggest earners for what tech company? that also makes PCs and, oh, there you go, and surfers. A, Dell, B, Lenovo, or C, Alien. <laughs> Looking for a brand name somewhere. Is there, dang it, there isn't, okay. Uh, no cheating for you. Uh, it's not cheating, it's using the resources on hand. <laughs> you said Dell, HP, or Lenovo? Uh, Dell, Lenovo, or Alien. I highly doubt it's alien. I'm, I believe they had their own audio line. Oh, Dell. Don't they own Logitech or is that HP? I'll just, you know what, we'll go with C, Lenovo. Um, well, B was Lenovo, or but you B want to go with Lenovo. Lenovo? Yes. Yeah, that's correct. It was Lenovo. Question four. Being a nerd works. <laughs> <laughs> Which of the following countries has the United Kingdom never invaded? A, Egypt, B, Afghanistan, or C, Sweden? Oh, I want to say Sweden, but it seems like a trap. Uh, it is, in fact, Sweden. Ah. Oh. They've never invaded Sweden. Yeah, it's Perfect. kind of a short list for them. Hey. And finally, question five. On April 6th, 1772, Catherine the Great ended a tax on men with what? A, cats, B, land, or C, beards? Catherine the Great of Russia? Mm hmm Cats, men, beard. Uh, I'm gonna guess beards. That's correct. Wow. Peter the Great levied the tax in an effort to bring Russia in line with the customs of Western Europe. People who had a beard had to carry around a beard token that proved they had paid their tax. Wow. Yeah. And that's why I don't grow beard. Mm. Clearly. Same. I don't that's, want to, that's totally I don't want to carry around my little beard token. Yeah. No, like I could totally grow a beard. Yeah. Same, y'all. Same. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Glad we're all on the same page. Well, that's the end of round one. So Mason, can you please give us a score update? All right. So 
Very close round one there. Uh, currently, it's 30 to 20 in favor of Chris. Still very much in everyone's game. All righty, and now it is time for round two. So, Mason, can you please tell us the rules? All right, round two. It's a directed round. Uh, both contestants will get five questions. However, these will each be on the same subject. Uh, correct answers are worth 20 points. However, if you, if you get it wrong, your opponent can bounce it back for 10. All righty, Lydia, are you ready? So, actually... Before I ask, are you ready? I need to tell you what your category is. Um, so you're going to get questions about a famous actor born on April 6th, which is the uh, date that this podcast is being released. And that actor is Paul Rudd, born April 6th, 1969. So Lydia, are you ready? Yes. Okay. Question one. Rudd's first film was what 1995 coming-of-age teen comedy starring Alicia Silverstone based loosely loosely based on the Jane Austen novel Emma okay well Paul Rudd I know of him mm -hmm. great off to a great start um let's see let's see based on the Jane Austen novel Emma so if it's a coming of age it could either be like un like a spin-off situation or it could be a period piece which honestly doesn't narrow it down for me very much because i don't know paul rudd movies set Let's in beverly see. hills so it's not a period piece okay okay so not a period piece set in beverly hills hmm. I, I may have just given it away for chris mayhaps maybe his knowledge of paul rudd is better than mine perhaps let me think set in beverly hills and it was in the 90s you said right 1995. 1995. let's see i oh wait um it's the one they made a musical off of it at one point crap 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 but it didn't go to broadway it was like off broadway um yellow clothing yellow clothing clueless yes nice was clueless uh <laughs> he left the television series sisters to be in the film there you go. Okay. Okay. Question two. Rudd played Brian Fantana in what Will Ferrell comedy film? Oh. Let's see. Can you repeat who he played again? Brian Fantana. Brian Maybe Fantana. 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 I haven't Fantana? actually seen this film. If anything like that. <laughs> but if it's if it's yeah. But it's Will see. Ferrell. Okay. Hmm. I, the other one, I like had a grasp on the idea that I knew what it was. This one, I have absolutely no clue. Absolutely no idea. You don't so. want to just name a Will Ferrell film? <laughs> That's the question, isn't it? Ah, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no. <laughs> Great. Uh, Chris, do you know? A Will Ferrell film? Yes. Uh... Of the Anchorman, it was Anchorman. Are yes. you kidding me? Yep, uh, he also appeared in the sequel. Wow, good job. Qu question just three: Guessing the one with the most dudes in it. Yeah, ah, there you reasonable. Go. Question three: Rudd had a recurring role as Bobby Newport on what sitcom? Bobby Newport. Um, I know the name. Ah, uh, da 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 da. Bobby Newport. It's a it's a it's a series my friend watches all the time. We used to watch it in math together. Crap, 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 crap. Um, Parks and Rec. Correct. Cool. His character ran against Leslie Nope for the open city council seat. Nice. Question four: Rudd plays what superhero in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Oh, um, crap! <laughs> Out of all the things I should know, um, hold on, it's the bug guy, Ant Man. Yes, yeah. the bug guy, Ant-Man. Uh, he has appeared in four Marvel films, Marvel films as the Ant-Man. Okay. And finally, question five. Last year, Rudd starred in the fourth film in what comedy franchise originally developed by Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd? Comedy series. Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd. Um, what would that be? Uh, 
Oh my god. I feel like I should know this. Um, let's see. <sighs> Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd. I know so many Bill Murray movies. And yet none of them are coming to mind. Let's see. Um, mm, wait, sci-fi. It's probably sci-fi and it's comedy. It's probably Ghostbusters. It is probably Ghostbusters. It is Ghostbusters. Um, wow. Ghostbusters Afterlife is set 32 years after Ghostbusters 2. Hell yeah. Wow. All righty, Chris. Um, your topic, I actually had Mason write uh, questions for you because you mentioned that you were a video game nerd. And so, thank um, God. Oh, thank God. <laughs> and so, and I don't know if this is going to be really good or really bad for you because it's, it, you know, but uh, Mason has written you five questions about famous third party games for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Oh, shoot. Nintendo. Yeah. Oh, hey, Matthew geez. only told me video games. I I'm had a the PC gamer, man. I had to guess. Race, he but... didn't give me any specifics. All right. Well, okay, you got we'll your hopes up, shot. Chris. You got I your had, hopes up. I had an NES as a kid. Uh, so, or SNES, not the original NES. So we'll see how it goes. It's the same thing, right? I was going to say, I, I think you're still going to be fine. But anyway. Let's hope so. Let's well, do it. Here we go. Question one. The best-selling third-party NES game starred what quartet of amphibians who take on the villainous Foot Clan? Okay. That will not be a problem, thankfully. <laughs> Unless I somehow magically confuse this with another quartet of amphibians that fight against another foot clan. This should be the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It is. That is correct. Mm -hmm. Question two. I never beat that kid. The best selling Same. third party series on the NES was what trailblazing JRPG series developed by Enix? By Enix? Zelda's not by Enix. Is he? So, it's not Dragon Quest. Final Fantasy? Not Final Fantasy. Lydia? I would not know. OK. Well, Chris, you passed through the right answer. It was actually Dragon was Quest. Was it Dragon Quest? OK. Yeah. yeah, no, Final Fantasy was by Square, so. Oh, is this before they merged? This was before they merged. They merged oh. in 2003. God. So. Yeah. Yeah, this okay. was. That's what I was thinking as well. I, I was, was thinking say, after they merged. This was the big thing Enix did before they became the other half of Square Enix. Gotcha. Interesting. Common mistake. Good to know. I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> Matthew. Matthew's like, what the He's heck like, I would not know. About? Yeah, this is. I'm just answering I, this. I, shit. I, I know a lot of things. This is not my area of expertise, which is why I said, Mason, can you please write these questions? Anyway, uh, question three. Among Konami's NES releases was a trio of games in what series that follows the Belmont clan's eternal struggles against Dracula? Oh, oh, thank God you said Dracula. This should be, and I hope not too many nerds watch your podcast because if I'm making a fool of myself now, uh, but this should be Castlevania. Yes, that's correct. Okay, yeah. thank God. Question four. Capcom was a very active developer for the NES, notably releasing six games in what platformer series where the titular blue robot fights the evil Dr. Wily? That should be Mega Man. That's correct. Mason said Dang. to also accept Rocket Man. Rock Man. Rock Man. Rock that's Man. Sorry, not Rocket Man. It does say Rock Man. You're because yeah. that's the name that Mega Man is known as in Japan. And then when they were bringing him to the West they thought it would be too confusing for people who'd expect him to be made out of rocks. And so they went with Mega Man instead. Interesting. The more you know. Yeah. And finally, question five. Another game developed by Capcom for the system is what cult classic platform where Scrooge McDuck travels the world to collect treasure? Scrooge McDuck, as in the father of, oh, 
I don't know if his father, maybe uncle of Donald Duck. Or <laughs> what? Um, I don't know about that. Uh, Scrooge McDuck. <laughs> it's, what, it's, it's what it says. Travels the world collecting treasures. <laughs> wow. Um, I have a feeling this was the hard question, right, Mason? Um, maybe. Solid that maybe. Even more ridiculous than Kingdom Hearts. Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, you're not actually wrong on that one. It is a little more ridiculous than that. I, I don't even know what to guess. Scrooge McDuck travels the world. <laughs> uh, no. Okay. Uh, Lydia, do you know? Is it Ducktales? It is Ducktales. Is it? Heck no. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It was done as a tie-in to the TV show. Oh my god! I, I didn't it's have now cable. voiced by David. That's Tennant. my excuse. Yes. <laughs> excuse is excuse. Yeah. The, the only thing anyone remembers from that game is the is one particular track on the soundtrack, and that's the the theme of the moon. You know, but da 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 da. That one. That's the only thing from that game that has like made a huge lasting impact. Oh, about Huey, Louie, and... Yeah, Dewey, yeah. The third one. That Huey, no Dewey, and Louie. Huey, yes. Dewey, and Louie. Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Oh! Yeah, they actually re there's actually a, a remastered version of the game, which I believe is on PC. Dang it. Okay. Really no excuses then. Yeah, really no excuses. I'm, I'm just yeah. pathetic. Oh, well, <laughs> okay. You got you got three of five, and they were all written by Mason, so they're inherently hard. So you, you know, you did well. Donka. Well, that's the end of round two. So Mason, can you please give us a score update? All right, both players did very well that round. Uh, Lydia got ninety points. Chris got seventy. Damn. And so the score is currently Lydia one ten, Chris one hundred. Very close. Oh. Very much anyone's game. Going into round three. Well, now it is time for round three. So, Mason, can you please tell us the rules? All right. Round three is our second general knowledge round. Correct answers this time are worth 30 points. However, if you get it wrong, your opponent can bounce it back for 15. All righty. Lydia, are you ready? Yes. Here we go. Question one. What interstate highway, whose number also appears on the bypass route of Lake Charles, Louisiana, is also known as the Foothill Freeway in Southern California? Route 66. No, no. Wait, freaking hell. Wait, 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 wait. I got too, I got Chris? too cocky. Isn't that... It's it, 134 and 210. 210. 210. Yes, Interstate 210. Oh, 210. Yeah, it's a Foothill God. Freeway, not Foothill Boulevard. Yeah, not Foothill Boulevard. Yeah, I realized it after I said it. Yeah. I was like, nice. Like 66? She, mm -hmm. she had so much confidence. I was like, whoa. Yeah. whoa. I know I did. Hey, you know, go in, go hard, go strong. You did, but and I, you answered very confidently, which is what we what we were looking for exactly yeah um yes but this is interstate 210 uh it's also uh, signed as state route 210 east of the 57 to its terminus with the 10 in redlands question two the seventh symphony of what german composer is infamous for only giving a single triangle roll and cymbal crash to the percussionists in the entirety of the one hour 20 minute work is this my good old friend gustav mahler no, not Mahler. Chris? I actually have no idea, so we're going to go with the uh, ever so generic Beethoven. Uh, no, not Beethoven. Uh, no, this is Anton Bruckner. I don't the infamous is. pair of notes inspired the oft-told saying that, quote, Bruckner hates percussionists. Maybe we should actually attend music history, Chris. Just saying. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> that seems I, I think drastic. she mentioned him at one point, yeah. Oh, just really? <laughs> I think I she got did, yeah. A good score on the midterm. So, uh, but yeah, I'll start going after the recital. Well, as long as you pass the class, it's fine. Doesn't matter. C's get the grades. Exactly. <laughs> Question three What is the largest country by landmass in Africa? Largest country by landmass in Africa. 
I know very few countries Same. in Africa. Yeah. Um, would that be... I'm trying, I'm like trying to visualize like the Olympic lineups in my brain, you know, when they like all march in and I'm trying to visualize the amount of people I can visualize. And I, let's see, because technically, because I'm thinking of some of the really, really ones higher up that are like bordering Europe, but like those aren't the ones that I think have the large landmass. Um, I think I'm just going to throw it out there. I want to say like Algeria. It is Algeria. Yes. Okay. Wow. I seem to remember reading that somewhere. So I, that just popped in my brain. Yeah. And actually that one is along the Mediterranean there at the, at the top of oh, the it is. country. Yeah. Then my knowledge or of where continent. it is on the thing is not good, but I got yeah. it right. So that's all that matters. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's in between. It's so Morocco's on the West coast and then there's Algeria and Tunisia's kind of like in between, but Tunisia's really small. So it's up on the North end. Um, and then Libya is to the East of Algeria and then Egypt. Libya and was going to be my guess. Oh, dang it. Well, Question four. What kind of trees produce acorns? Oh, um, trees with acorns. I think those are oak trees. Yeah, correct. The acorn is also yeah. known as the oak nut. Hmm. Nice. Yeah. And finally, question five. The cities of Rolling Hills and Rolling Hills Estates are two of the four cities located on what peninsula in southern Los Angeles County? Um, on a peninsula. peninsula. Let's see. Uh, what peninsula would that be? Peninsula. Um, the Rolling Hills Estates. Oh, um, let's see. Rich neighborhood. Um, is it Palos Verdes? Palos Verdes Peninsula. The other two are Rancho Palos Verdes and Palos Verdes Estates. Yeah, I was just trying to figure out which one of them it was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Chris, wow. are you ready for your five questions? Not after that. All right. <laughs> Let's do it. Question one. What interstate highway connects the LA Basin to the high desert via the Cajon Pass? So this is northbound? Yes. Uh, to the desert, though? Mm-hmm. To the high desert. Still in SoCal? Mm hmm. I don't know, the I 15? Is that correct? Yes. Oh, out east there. Question two Capable of producing sounds as loud as 188 decibels, what is the loudest animal in the world? Is that the little, like, tiny rat looking thing? Okay, guess not. <laughs> uh never mind 188 decibels is this a real or fictional creature this is a real creature okay it's a real animal just have to double check an animal do opera singers get that loud uh, uh, uh 188 decibels Maybe an elephant. Not an elephant. Lydia? Okay, so I'm gonna think, oh, I'm gonna think ocean animals because I don't think it's something we've probably ever heard because I feel like 188 decibels is really loud. Um, probably would have murdered our ears. So I'm gonna think something underwater. Um, and based on like, echolocation reasons and things i think i'm gonna go with the, the blue whale like the, the big big whale big whale the blue whale that's correct yeah uh despite its impressive size uh, impressive volume it is not the loudest animal on earth relative to its size as blue whales are the largest creatures on the planet the howler monkey is the loudest animal relative to its size which is almost ten thousand times louder per unit mass than a blue whale but the blue whale is the one who produces the 188 decibel sounds so okay. yeah okay okay Lydia it's on they're they're noted um okay. Okay, uh Chris. Wagner okay. singers actually blue whales they're really, yeah I bet yeah really good that makes sense tell after that makes sense. question three 
In 2018, a U.S. law was passed to mint new coins for what denomination, which had previously been the value of coins with Susan B. Anthony and Sacagawea? Oh, the dollar coin. That's correct. Yes. Thank God. Ma Mason, that. do you know what um, what's going to be on the new dollar coins? Um, so the new dollar coins that are plenty reissue are are based on innovation. That's a it, and it's going to feature designs of famous inventions from different states. And the actual figure on the dollar coin, I believe, is a, is a portrait of the Statue of Liberty. There you go. Oh. Question four. Taco Bell is best known for what composition, now commonly played as a wedding processional? You're kidding. That came from Taco Bell? Taco Bell. <laughs> Paco Bell. <laughs> Good job, Chris. Wow, no. I'm just gonna. I guess I just forfeit right there, right? <laughs> you need to get your hearing checked. Wow, I I am wearing headphones. I can literally deliver the sound straight to my ears, and I. Wow. Maybe I'm just hungry. You need to get Paco your hearing Bell. checked. Um, the wedding procession. Um. I don't think I know the actual composition name since everyone just calls it the wedding march. Can you <sighs> sing it and and maybe it will be right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> if I get this wrong, I will actually have to resign as a musician and I will be going into law where I can sue myself for lack of knowledge. Uh, Bum, 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 bum. Not that one. Oh, I know um, that's graduation. No, 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 no. That that's that's the that's the wedding march. But it's uh, that's actually Felix Mendelssohn's wedding. You march. know what? I'm just gonna. I I know Lydia knows it. I'll let her take the steal, and hopefully, I could steal something from her later on. Uh, so Lydia, what did uh, Johann Pachelbel write? It's the can. It's the canon in D. Yep. That's. Great. Are you? Yeah. No, Chris. <laughs> All right, all right. Chris has forfeit. I think I that's believe... the first the first rage quit we've had on wow. <laughs> over tea. No, wow. not, not not quite, not quite. I remember when when I had Stephen on last semester, he it, he got up and left the room at one point. Oh, um, so we're not not quite to that level yet. But uh, but yes, in fact, this was the canon in tea. Um, oh, yeah. That's why he was telling you to sing it. Maybe you grasp onto the the key. Dun, dun, dun done yeah, whatever you're a violist my guy i i played it when i played cello and i hated it so it was like blocked from my memory you know a little bit of ptsd from got it the... got it yeah well yeah i understand yeah i really do but it's like the only thing Paco bell is known for so i should have really known yeah oh well well now you know <laughs> for next time for that music history class you can write write about the canon in D. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, question five. In 1969, Ferraro would introduce the refreshing mints, small hard mints packaged in a small plastic box, which would later be rebranded as what? Ferraro? In a small plastic box? Are they currently still in plastic box or have they upgraded yeah. to tin? Yeah, no, they're, they're still in plastic. In plastic? Mm -hmm. Mints. Plastic mints. Or, sorry, pl mints within a plastic box. Oh, do you mean like the, the strips? No. Oh, okay. Lydia? Okay. Mints in a plastic box. I I can't think of anything that Ferrero might have produced, but Tic Tacs? That's correct. Yes, Tic Tacs. My fun fact is that I once had about probably 25 Tic Tacs <sighs> during a performance of, uh, of uh, Noises Off. This was my junior year of high school. It was part of a gag. Um, anyway. We don't need to go That's into that any further. That's a lot of Tic Tacs, my guy. Yeah, it was a lot of Tic Tacs. It was a lot of Tic Tacs. But that's the wow. end of round three. So Mason, can you please give us a score update? 
All right. Uh, both players did pretty well that round. Uh, Lydia got 135 points. Uh, Chris got 75. So uh, the current score is Lydia 245 and Chris 175. Wow. Heading into round four, which, by the way, still mathematically possible for you to win, Chris. If I wasn't going up against Lydia, sure. Do not put me there. Do not I got to psych there. you out somehow. It's the only no, way I'm going to have a chance. You of know, winning. my weakness is. Oh. <laughs> well, now it is Fine. time for round four. So, Mason, can you please explain the rules? Uh, so, round four, it's the showdown. Uh, there will be three questions, 40 points apiece. Contestants will lock in their answers somehow. Uh, yeah. All righty, Lydia, Chris, are you ready? Are you ready? Sure. Okay. Question one. While working in a lab on April 6th, 1938, Roy J. Plunkett accidentally discovered polytetrafluorothel. Shoot, I, this was another one that I practiced yesterday, and now we're going to mess it up. Polytetrafluorothel. Yeah. Let me try that again. While working in a lab on April 6, 1938, Roy J. Plunkett accidentally discovered polytetrafluoroethylene, better known as what non-stick substance? Polytetra polytetrafluoroethylene. Is this whoever answers first gets it? No. no. Bo both of you will have a chance to answer, and then I will announce the correct answer. That was a very good pronunciation on your part, Matthew. Thank you. Well, I practiced it last night, and then I, and then I, and then I went to bed, is and this, clearly lost it all. Does it have to be a non, a non stick. What are non stick substances? Oh. Okay. How do you answer? I will call on you. Okay. Lydia, do you have an answer? No, not right now. Okay. I'll give you another few seconds here. I think this is it. Or I think I know the generic name for it. Yeah, we're going for generic names. Like, so. as in, like, a acetaminophen is generic's name is, you know, Tylenol or something. I, I think acetaminophen is the generic name for Tylenol. But, but yes, that's, yeah. That's effectively what we're looking for. Uh, Lydia, do you have an answer now? Or, or sorry, nope. I meant like a brand. Okay, because because I know it's a, it's a substance. It's not. It's like what are nonstick skillets? Oh. Okay, then I don't know the generic name, but I know a brand of it. To to to. I might have it. Okay. Is it Teflon? Chris. Teflon. It is Teflon. Yes. Plunkett was trying to make something else in the lab when he accidentally made Teflon. Huh. And I read about what he was trying to make and it didn't really make any sense to me. So we'll just say he was trying to make something else. But not not curious, so what was he trying to make? Like the chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> <laughs> was he trying to make like MRE rations or something? I couldn't tell you. Okay. I don't know. Anyway, question two. The first permanent European settlement in present-day South Africa was founded by what nation? Hmm. My immediate thought was, who colonized? Uh, that's a lot of Europe. Yep, that's a <laughs> didn't lot of Europe. <laughs> didn't narrow much down for me. No, yeah, that's not, that's not going to be helpful. Glad to know. First. Do we have guesses? Uh, I, I can take a crack at it. Go for it, Chris. Is it the Dutch? Or What's the name of the country that the Dutch come from? Uh <laughs> because that's a that's a language and like a people but what's the country uh, dude i 
no. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. They come from Netherlands. <laughs> okay, Lydia. I'm gonna say because they colonized a lot. I'm gonna say Spain. It was in fact the Netherlands. <gasps> yeah, the Cape Colony in what is now Cape Town uh, was founded by the Dutch. Uh, the language Afrikaans evolved from the Dutch language and is the third most spoken language in the country. Yeah. And finally, question three. What Italian Renaissance artist's best known painting is the School of Athens? School of Athens. Um, oh, shoot. Oh, it's. Oh, shoot, 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 shoot. It's. It's one of the one name bros. It's one of the one name dudes. Yeah, yeah, it's one of the one name dudes. <laughs> so helpful. Um, let's see. It's not, it's not it's like, those two, so there has to be the other two. I think it's like in the Vatican. Is it? All right, no, it's not my turn, is it? Lydia, do you have a guess? I th is it Raphael? Chris? Is it Raphael? It is Raphael. The famous painting one depicting- One of the turtles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I say, you guessed the right Ninja Turtle. As, yeah. like, I, I, I was going through two. the Ninja Turtles and I was like, which one? Yeah, I was like, it can't be Donatello or Leonardo. Uh, and it couldn't be Michelangelo, so maybe. <laughs> Had to be Raphael, yeah. The, Great. The famous okay. painting depicting Plato and Aristotle, among others, is in the Stanza della Segnatura uh, in the Apostolic Palace in Vatican City. There you, cool. go. there you go. There you go. Well, that's the end of the game. So, Mason, can you please give us the final wow. score? All right. So, uh, both players doing pretty well that round. Uh, Chris got 120 points in that final round. Lydia got A. So, the Chris final got score. All three of them, right? Yeah, Chris got all three of them right. Wait, really? Good job. Good job. Wait, what were the questions? <laughs> sorry. I, yeah, he got that so one. He, wow. he did. Oh, wow. No, really? sorry. It, wow. It's just, it's it's highly unusual to, for people to get all three court okay, round Matthew, court questions. Right? Yeah, you join a very were, exclusive club. They were too easy, apparently. <laughs> he didn't I, have faith in you. Sorry. How many other people got all three final round questions right? Um, over the 63 episodes that we've done, only, uh, only three other people have gotten all three so i get like an invite to an honorary <laughs> you get to join uh, an exclusive club i'll yeah. give you a sticker hell yeah oh sorry <laughs> oh no it's, it's given so well. it's all right. heck yes it anyway so the final <laughs> score uh is lydia 325 chris 295 so I'm lydia is lost. the champion we're, you still we're lost really still really lost. good scores there um lydia uh you've won do you have anything that you would like to say I'm honored, but you know, we're all winners here. We're all, we all did our best. We tried our best and I'm just so proud. I can represent myself. Yeah, you did your best, Chris. <laughs> well, that was, that was really beautiful. Thank you, Lydia. Um, well, that's our show for this week, folks. <laughs> Thank you, Lydia and Chris for being on the show today, as well as Mason Cook for being the scorekeeper and also for composing the music. Uh, today's questions were written by Caitlin Fick, Matthew Hauser, Lucas Hauser, Tanner Tim, Mason Cook, and yours truly. And thank you for listening. Please like and subscribe to Trivia Over Tea on your preferred podcast platform and leave us a review if you enjoyed it. Check out our Facebook and Instagram pages at Trivia Over Tea, as well as our Twitter account, also at Trivia Over Tea. And you can find us on YouTube and also at Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash Trivia Over Tea. And feel free to message us on, on any of these platforms if you have any comments or suggestions regarding the show. And tune in next week when we'll have two new contestants and 33 more fantastic questions. So thank you. 